so imagine, imagine, it's, it's Russia, you're in a village, it's 30 years, something like that, after the serfs have been emancipated. There's a few agriculturalists who've managed to produce successful agricultural enterprises. And, you know, maybe they have a couple of cows, they have some land, they're able to hire a few people, and they're raising almost all the food, right? And so, and they're a minority in any village because the hyper-productive successful are always a minority. So they're a minority in every village. All right, and so, and, and there's people who are doing worse, and then there's a, a lot of people who aren't doing so well at all. And then the communist intellectuals show up and they tell the people who aren't doing so well, some of whom are just suffering because of life, but some of whom aren't doing well because they've never done anything productive with even a second of their life. And the communist intellectuals come in and say, you know those guys that are doing so much better than you? Yeah, they actually s stole all of that from you. And you're morally obligated to go take it back. It's like, oh man, you know, after, after six cups of mead, let's say, or let's say 10, or let's say 20, and I'm drunk out of my mind, and I've got my cruel buddies with me, and we're all resentful right to the core because we've wasted our miserable lives, and now we have an opportunity to go, like, down the street to our wealthy neighbor's house and to rape his daughters, and we can do it in the name of good. It's like, well, there's a story you can market. And that happened everywhere in the Soviet Union. And so they wiped out the kulaks. It's like, great, and then six million Ukrainians starved to death. Yeah, that's right. right. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm a farmer. Brilliant. The Ukraine was the breadbasket of Europe. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Then it became a region pathetically unable to feed mm -hmm. itself. And yet, the same sort of world view that gave rise to that, we're now being told, you use the word neo-Marxist. Uh, many people in Australia use the word cultural Marxist. Mm -hmm. I've got an old friend who said to me, uh, what are you talking about, John? You know, free capitalist Australia is not going to let that happen here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Qantas Airlines took a nice step towards that the other day, and they adopted their language policing policies. These corporate, these corporations who should know far better let these far left fifth columns into their organisations. They think they're not going to pay for that. They think they're going to stop with some demands for the re reconstruction of language. Not like the demands for reconstruction of language, by the way, are trivial. They're maybe the most important thing you could possibly demand, right? I want to reshape the way you speak. I want to reshape the way you think. It's like, well, that's okay, as long as it doesn't interfere with the bottom line. It's like, it'll interfere with the bottom line. You let that fifth column in. It's a warning to corporate people. You let that fifth column in, man, you're going to regret it. You're going to regret it. So, and things can turn on a dime, you know, a, a very well-organized minority, even if the majority opposes them, and, and they do. A very well-organized minority can have an unbelievably pernicious effect on an on a oh, organization. Margaret Mead's made that point. Mm -hmm. Societies well, change direction when a small group of people decide to change its direction. That, that's the way history works. Yeah. Well, that's what happened in the universities. Let's come back. Um, <clears throat> this issue of the redefining of language. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that there are two things that people who want to reshape society in brutal ways uh, do. The first is they start to silence good debate either silence it or shut it down or whatever. Second thing they do is they redefine language so it's very hard to have a debate. Mm -hmm. So diversity, actually, I mean, there's no other way to put it. In this country, it's rapidly coming to mean a stifling conformity. You mm -hmm. dare not deviate from the line. Uh, and you see it with a whole lot of other words that are bandied around, equality being one of them. Yep because it's confused. Equality of opportunity is confused with equality yeah. of outcome. Well, the initial wedge was equality of opportunity, mm. and then that flew, and, and so, well, no, no, it's equality of outcome. Mm. That's equity, and, mm. and that's, I cannot believe how rapidly that idea, which is the ultimate and terrible ideas, I can't believe how rapidly that spread, and how mm. little people criticize it. Well, that's because it. To mm. uninformed analysis, it sounds good if you're feeling carelessly mm. compassionate. Because you go back to the Ukrainian example, mm. in destroying the leading edge farmers, you actually guaranteed misery for everyone. Oh, un un unbelievable. People were selling human body parts in the Ukraine for food. You know, it was, if mm. you were a mother and your children were starving and you went out into the fields mm. after they were harvested and you picked up individual pieces of grain that the harvesters had left, and you didn't turn them over to the state, that was a capital offense. Right. That's, mm. That was, 
And the, the funny thing is that that was in the glory days of the Russian Revolution, right? That wasn't in the like 1950s. That mm. wasn't in the 1930s mm. even. That was in the 1920s. That was right when mm. this started. And I think it was I think it was Malcolm Muggeridge who was reporting on that for for a UK newspaper whose name escapes me at the moment. He was pointing all of this yeah. out, you know, and no one paid attention. To no it. one paid attention. No. Towards the end of his life, he warned that the West is in danger of eating itself out from within. Mm. And I wonder whether, in fact, he wasn't being very prescient. Mm. And you and I want to stop that happening for the sake of our young people. As much for the as sake anything of else, everyone. For the sake of everyone. Mm -hmm. We but went down that pathway already. Like, we've we don't seen need it. to do we've it again. We've tried it. That's, and things. History should be like science in the sense that it ought to be objective. It ought to be told truthfully. It ought not to be used to secure some dominant group's preferred version of society. Well, this is also why, see, what I've been trying to do about this, because I thought this through a long time ago, I thought, well, I don't want to, I think the group identity game ends in blood. It doesn't matter who plays it. Left-wingers play mm. it, blood. Right-wingers play it, blood. And lots of it, not just a little bit. You can't play the identity politics game. Well, so what do you do instead? You, you live the mythologically heroic life as an individual. That's the right place to work. And yep. that's the message mm. of the West, as far yep. as I'm concerned, is. is that we yep. figured that out. We figured yep. out that the collective identity mm. was not yeah. the pinnacle statement, that mm. the individual, not that collective identities have no value. Obviously, family has value and, 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 and your organizations have value, mm. all of that. That's not the issue. The issue is what's the paramount value? What's the metric by which people should mm. be measured? And the answer is they should be measured as individuals, as yeah. if they have a divine soul. They yeah. should be measured in that manner. But it can't be a selfish thing. That is to say, if I recognize I have worth and dignity, I'm obliged to recognize that so do you. Mm -hmm. I think you can't recognize that you have intrinsic worth and dignity without also doing, without also recognizing it in others. Mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. I don't yep. think that I can recognize yep. the worth of another person without, without stumbling onto the idea mm -hmm. that I also have to recognize that for myself. When did you think, yep. well, everyone would want that, but well, people don't mm -hmm. because you're also charged with the responsibility of your own care mm. as if you matter. Mm. Well, that's a big responsibility. Like, yeah. it's a lot easier to assume that everything is pointless. I mean, that's painful mm. and all of that, but, well, you don't bear any responsibility. And yeah, no one lives that way. No, no, well, not, not <laughs> for long.